بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم ما بعد إن العبد إذا سبقت له من الله منزلة إذا الله has decided that he wants to grant the highest stages for a believer فلم يبلغها بعمل and his actions have not reached that criteria to qualify him to achieve that status ابتلاه الله في جسده أو ماله أو في ولده الله سبحانه وتعالى test him with regards to his body his wealth his children ثم سبره على ذلك Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the tawfiq to be patient hatta yubligahu al-manzila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then elevate him sabaqat lahu min Allah azza wa jal to that stage and status which Allah wanted him to achieve so all conditions are from Allah Allah is hakeem he is all knowing all wise Al-Alim Al-Khabir and he knows the reason and the hikmah why he inflicts certain conditions on his believers مَا يَزَالُ الْبَلَاءُ بِالْمُؤْمِنِ that difficulties and hardship will continue come to a believer until he meets Allah with a clean slate Ibn Abbas Rajilana told Uh, his companions Should I not show you some female who is a jannati This dark skinned lady came to Nabi alayhi salam فقالت إني أسرع وإني أتكشف فادعو الله لي Oh Nabi of Allah I have fits I am epileptic And in that situation, my satar opens, make a dua for me. So Nabi Ali Sallam asked, In shi'ti sabarti walakil jannah. You can be patient and go through this hardship, and Allah will grant you jannah. Wa in shi'ti da'utu allaha ay yu'afiq. If you want, I'll make dua that Allah will cure you. But that's it. So she replied, Sahaba, Sahabiyat, wa wise with regards to akhirah. فَقَالَتْ أَسْبِرُوا I'll rather be patient and go through these difficulties. But I have one request that when this difficulty comes to me, O Nabi of Allah, don't let my burda be compromised. So Sahabiyat, Even in conditions which was not under their control, they still wanted to obey Allah. Allah forgive us today in opportunities and options where we can obey Allah. Forget disobeying Allah. The Ummah is seeking those moments where they can display flagrant deviation from the awamir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. المصيبة تبيض وجه صاحبها. That these difficulties and hardship which comes to the people of Iman, it's an opportunity to brighten and enlighten their faces on the day of Qiyama. يوم تسود الوجو. On that day of time, turmoil and tribulation, when faces will be darkened. On that day, those people who had difficulties and hardships, their faces will be enlightened and brightened. Some people have said to us that uh, the, this was amongst the best Ramadan. We get an opportunity during the lockdown to worship Allah. Others have said that these difficulties, these difficult moments when a person was inflicted and seen flashed in front of them death, given an opportunity to turn to Allah to resolve all their matters. So that's very good. Whatever ibadat, whatever good, whatever opportunity in that moments of difficulty or in that moments of freedom we utilize it properly, that is very good. But ideally if you want to excel, outperform and surpass in dunya and akhirat, if you want par excellence, 
Then Allah wants to see now in our moments of busyness, how much do we remember Him? Allah wants to see when you are cured now and the difficulty is removed and the hardship is gone and the fever is gone and the breathing returns to normal and all those ambitions and those high, high intentions which you told Allah, which was only between you and Allah, how genuine are you in your statement? Allah cured you, Allah protected you, Allah gave you afia. Now are you genuine in your declaration? So Allah wants unparalleled, unrivaled, un unseen sacrifice, not things which when we suit us and that mudakara we've gone through on circumstantial deen. Allah give us to week to listen to the entire series. But the whole point was that our deen shouldn't be circumstantial. When there are difficulties and hardships, we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to connect to the one that's sending those conditions. When any area there was trials and tribulations, you would send jamaats. People used to complain and say, Maulana, you are risking the Jamaat. The Jamaat is at risk. His right reply was, the Jamaat is at no risk. Those people in the path of Allah are going to do the amal that will draw the mercy of Allah. If they do not go there, the people are at risk. You are saying, I'm sending seven, eight brothers into that locality, to that masjid to do amal. You are worried about the brothers. I'm worried about the people of the locality. We need to establish amal in those localities to withdraw the calamity and the wrath from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see it one way, but the friends of Allah see some other way. In India, at once when there was a lot of riots and turmoil, then some people came to Hazrat Malana Inamul Hassan Rahimallah, and he said these two ayat spread it in the Ummah. وَإِن تَسْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا لَا يَذُرُّكُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْئًا They tell the, tell the Ummah that when any difficulties, hardships, trials, tribulations come, اسبروا, be patient, buried with patience, this is from Allah. وَتَتَّقُوا and abstain from sin. Then they planning, they plotting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you. So we need to be very particular. He said when that alan was made, in a very short span of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the difficulties and the trials on the people of Iman. Today's Amal is the Amal of Salat al-Nabi. Zubay ibn Kaab came to the Rasul of Allah and he said, Ya Rasul Allah, O Nabi of Allah, I inni akhru alayka salat fakam aj'al laka min salati. I read a lot of durur on you in abundance. What should be my practice? What should I adopt my daily pattern? So Nabi alayhi salam told him, Ma shi'ta fa in zitta fa wa khayrul laka. Whatever you can, so he said quarter, no increase in is better, one half increase in is better for you. No. Then eventually Nabi alayhi salam encouraged him to read and he said that I will make all of it, kulluha laka, I will spend all my time and only read durood on you. So he replied, the Nabi of Allah, إِذَنْ تُكْفَ هَمَّكْ وَيُغْفَرَ لَكَ ذَنْبُكْ If that is your habit and routine, then all your needs will be fulfilled, all your concerns will be addressed, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sins. So it will suffice for all your worries and your sins will be Forgiven. In another riwayat, يَكْفِيكَ اللَّهُ مَا أَهَمَّكْ مِنْ دُنْيَاكَ All worries, all concerns, all problems, all anxiety, all issues that you have, Allah will solve it. And your problems in akhirat as well. So we should be in the habit of reading durood. Allah Masyuti has written Ibn Abi Hajala in his book, has written that some pious people have stated that the most beneficial action found in a time of epidemics and great calamities was the recital of durood in abundance. So we should make it a habit to read durood in abundance. When we are inflicted 
And when we are not inflicted, let us not wait for the last moment. Innama sabru in the sadamatil ula. Malana Ashley Tanvi had prepared a kitab, Nashru Tib. With regards to the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this entire kitab was dedicated to that. When uh, Malana Ashraf Ali Tanwi, the author, was engaged in his compla compilation, then the area which he resided in at that time, Tana Bowen, was also afflicted with a plague. And people noticed that whenever he wrote the Kitab, no people would pass away due to the plague on that day. And the day where he didn't write, then there was notices of people passing away and being infected. So people came to Mullah Tanwi, his Muris, etc. and they allude him to this fact. So he said, when people told me about that, I made it my routine not to leave out writing this kitab on any day. And Mullah Tanwi himself in the footnotes of the kitab has written, and these are his words. As a matter of fact, from the time I had commenced writing this book until now, which is in Rabi Uthani 1329 Hijri, through the grace of Allah, this town has been protected from every calamity, despite the fact that this book remained unpublished. Moreover, there was severe and lengthy outbreak of an epidemic in all cities, towns, and villages this year, starting in the most places after Ramadan. Now it is the seventh month and it has not cleared up yet. But by the grace of Allah ya in Tana Bowen, there was no effect whatsoever. From the onset, I was certain that there would be no outbreak of the epidemic year. Now after observation, I disclose my notion of this book on the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam having such barakah proved to be correct. Meaning that the plague had not entered the area, the vicinity of Tana Bowen. So just the fact that the book wasn't published but initiated right in the kitab, Allah had put in so much barakah. Sheikh Sali, the Imam of Masjid al Quba, also went through great difficulty and he was admitted into intensive care unit and uh, open heart surgery was performed on him. After that, they noticed that there was some complications. So they called different doctors and they gathered around him to see what was the problem. Then they called a senior doctor, a Sudanese doctor, Dr. Adam, to see and he studied and monitored. And he said, there's congealed blood in your heart, which needs to be removed. So they needed permission now to start that procedure. So he said, I was under great distress. I seen the devices around me. They were preparing for the process and the procedure. And he says in his words, there was a Lebanese nurse who seen me and felt sorry on my condition. So she just told me this one statement. Salli ala nabi yashfiq Allah. Make durood on nabi alayhi salam, insha'Allah, Allah will cure you. He said, instantly, I started reading Durood. And by the time the doctors came to initiate the procedure, they seen the results and they said, you look like you are stable now. There's no need to do surgery. So that's the barakah of Durood. There was a saint by the name of Musa Dharir, Rahmatullah alayhi, and his experience was he was traveling in a boat, he began to sink. He was overcome by drowsiness. He saw Nabi alayhi salam. And he instructed everybody on the ship should read 1000 times durood. And Nabi alayhi salam taught in this durood, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin salatan tunjina biha min jameel ahwali wal afat wa qawdilana biha. Jami al Hajat, it is famous Durud, we'll find it in many kitabs. Durud at Tunjina. And he taught him to read us and say, read it a thousand times. He said that we had barely recited 300 times and we were saved from the boat sinking. So 
we should try to make it a habit to read this durood as well. Then the incident, Muhammad bin Suleiman was the author of Dalail Khairat. He once went to make ablution and there was a girl by well there and he went to go look for some bucket of water to draw. So that girl asked him, Man anta? He said, I am so and so sheikh. She said, Anta rajul alladhi yuthna alayka bil khair wa tatahayyad min al bi'r that you are such a great sheikh. People have said so much about you, but a matter of water in a well has perplexed you. So she spat in the well, and as she did that, the water came brimming up to the well. He made his wudu and he asked her that what was the cause of you having so much barakah in this action? She said, بِكَثْرَةِ salat." That I had read a lot of durood on Nabi Ali Salam. I was taught to read excessively durood. On a barakah of this, the Sheikh compiled Dalayul Khairat. And it is said even on his cover, there was a fragrance of amber and musk all the time. So one girl motivated him. So if the waters of the world can move through the barakah of durood, Allah can remove difficulties and hardships from a believer. Shaykh Abdul Rahman bin Abdul Rahim Rahmatullah says that once he had a situation, he fell, he got injured, he armed, uh, injured his arm, hand seriously, and uh, he spent the entire night in distress. When he fell asleep, he saw Nabi alayhi salam, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Nabi alayhi salam seen him in this condition, because he was in this condition, he had a habit of reading a lot of durood, but that day he never read durood because of his situation. Nabi alayhi salam told him, your abundance of reciting durood has made me distressed. Has made me distressed. When he woke up from this dream, there was no pain or swelling and he was 100% cured. In one kitab, Nuzhatul Majalis, there was a person who used to suffer from urine retention. So Sheikh Shihabuddin bin Raslan a great scholar, seen in his dream and he complained about his illness to the Sheikh. So the Sheikh said that how is it that you are oblivious to the tried and tested antidotes? He said, what is the antidote? He replied, read Allahumma salli wa sallim wa balik ala ruhi Sayyidina Muhammadin fil arwah wa salli wa sallim ala qalbi Sayyidina Muhammad fil qulub wa salli wa sallim ala jasadi Sayyidina Muhammadin fil ajsad wa salli wa sallim ala qabri Sayyidina Muhammadin fil qubur He said, read this duru, the salutations and see what happens. So this person after seeing the dream began reading this durood in abundance and the sickness of the urine retention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him shifa. So let us make it a habit during an illness or difficulties and outside illness as well to read durood and janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The amal for today is when we hear the adhan we should reply to the Adhan. So if the Muadhin says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, let us say the same, except for Hayya al salah and Hayya al-Falah, la hawla wa la quwta illa billah. At the end of the Adhan, Dakhal al-Jannah, min qalbihi, he says it sincerely, he's a Jannati. Somebody why mentions that we should add on, wa ana ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu, wa anna Muhammadin abduhu wa rasooluh, رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّا وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ رَسُولًا غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ ذَنْبَهُ Allah will forgive his sins if he says that. Another reward, فَإِنَّ لَكُنَّ بِكُلِّ حَرْفٍ أَلْفَ أَلْفِ دَرَجَةٍ That if you reply, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every harf will give you one million stages. This narration is in Tabarani. In another riwayat, مَنْ قَالَ مِثْلَ مَا قَالَ هَذَا يَقِينًا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ 
Whoever says this with yaqeen in reply, he is a jannati. Another white fasal tawfa. After you reply to the muazzin, ask, make dua, whatever dua you make, your dua will be accepted.